What's up, guys? So today I took some losses day trading using supply and demand. Definitely learned a couple of lessons about market context, about strategy, discipline. So in this video, I kind of want to go through and show you how I made some losses today, how they could have been bigger losses even a month ago when I was making common mistakes, and then how my supply and demand zones are going to change and will draw my supply and demand zones going into tomorrow because it's something I like to do at the end of the day, before I go to bed with the overnight session, I am charting the ES and the NQ. Okay, those are the futures for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. And then I'm trading QQQ and SPY with them. The reason I'm doing so is strictly because with these overnight sessions, there's less gaps. It's a little bit clearer picture and they do you know, fluctuate kind of in the same way, right? The ES is going to go along with the S&P 500. So generally when I trade during the day, I have the ES chart or the NQ chart up on one monitor, and then I have my brokerage that I'm trading on on my other monitor. Okay, so let's dive right in real quick. This is the charting software that I'm using, guys. This is TradingView. You guys have seen this all over the place. All right, it's a free software. You can make upgrades, and I think it's like $10 a month, things like that. There's also free trials, but anyway, like this is what I'm using. This is not the brokerage. I'm not trading with this particular like software. This is just the easiest, most fluid, easy charting thing that I've, I frankly have seen. So that's what I've been uh, working on. What you're kind of looking at in all of this mess, okay? So we see the red and the green, and those are going to be supply and demand zones that I have pre-drawn in before the market. Like I said, at the end of this video, I'll pre-draw in some more because as the day develops, we have intraday levels that definitely pop up that I have not added yet for tomorrow. And all the levels here were made before the action that we see. The dotted blue lines, those are going to represent the sessions or like when the day officially starts and ends for that particular day. And like I mentioned, because there's an overnight with futures, if we look down at the bottom here, we can see there's a ton of volume down here. The actual market day was from right here to right here today. So a very small chunk. And then this is the whole entire overnight, which is going to have a little less volume. So essentially what I'm going to put up is I'm going to put up the last two days. Okay. So this is going to start in the overnight of March 8th. We are in March 10th right now, 745 at night. And I kind of want to just talk through what exactly happened and also Talk about the importance of other things that I've mentioned in previous videos, like the fact that opportunities will present themselves and they don't necessarily have to present themselves every single day. So this was yesterday. The market actually opened right here. And what had happened was this demand zone I had not drawn in when the market was open. I did have this demand down here and we could see it labeled 30 minute demand. What that means is that when I make my zones, I'm gonna make them on multiple different time frames because things like to present themselves in different ways. And then as I build, build my time zones down, I get more like closer to the five minute chart that I trade on, I can adjust that. But this started here from the, from the body of the highest candle down to the wick. And then as I shrunk down my time zones, they just became a little bit more clear to me. So that one was drawn in beforehand, before the market opened during the overnight session. I got up in the morning, I started looking and I saw that form and I was like, that might be something that we might see. And in the discord, when I talk about like my pre plan, because everything needs a plan, I talked about the fact that we were probably going to open above this demand zone. And I'd be waiting for movement either towards supply or towards demand. And until that happened, I wasn't going to be making any trades because what I'm looking for is for price action to rally into supply or demand, test that demand or that supply, and then reverse into the opposite direction. Well, the market opened right here. And I had not drawn this in. This was drawn later. But what we did is we had a little bit of a rally up to start the day. Now, because this was in the middle of the zones, I was not interested in trading this at all. And what we see is it came back down. And as it was coming back down, that's when I started looking to the left. And that's when I made this demand zone. And sure enough, it came bounced off demand. And this would have been a pretty good shot for me to go long. I did not go long in this position until a little bit later in the day. I wanted to see it break this candle, okay? So we had this retest, and once it broke this candle right here, I got into the trade right around here. 
I did not get stopped out and I made a small profit. Nothing crazy. Like I said, all those de details are in the Discord for anybody. Most of you guys that are watching this live are in the Discord. You can go back and see. It came back up. It touched supply. It came back down. Bounced up and tested it a second time. Now, this would be a great entry for me and my style if this was earlier in the day. This was essentially, they say, 1545. So for all the people that aren't into the military, 24-hour clock. Okay, so that's 345 in the afternoon. The market is just about to end with each one of these candles being five minutes. But we had a touch, a pullback, a retest. That's what I'm going to enter. Okay. That's the setup that I'm looking for. Just not this late in the day. By now I had my computer shut. I was not even looking at it. Overnight session though, things stayed pretty flat. I now had this demand zone. So here's coming into today. Coming into today, now in hindsight, it's very, very easy to see that the trend was downward, right? We had a nice rally yesterday one of the first real green days we've seen in a while but even from the overnight down we started making lower highs and lower lows lower highs and lower lows when i woke up in the morning this was eight o'clock in the morning usually about the first time i could turn my computer on i saw that we were in this demand but i also knew that this demand had been touched once twice and had all this action in it and the more times we start to touch these zones that's definitely going to be a sign of weakness in the future. That's the first thing I should have known or said to myself. But in the morning, as a new trader, I'm really, really excited. And that's what led to one of my first big mistakes today. It came out and then it came back in. The market was still not open yet. This is 9 a.m. Right on this red candle here, that's 9 a.m. And we can see when the, when the volume picks up, this is exactly what happens. So here's kind of where I took that first loss. I said to myself, if we can pull out of demand, I'm going to try and go long and hope for that same rally that we had yesterday. I said literally in my last video, and it sucks so bad when I say things and then I don't follow my own rules, but I said like, I really like a second touch. And also I like a zone that has not been worked, that does not have a lot of price action moving through it, either in any direction. And also I like to follow market context. The market context here is the whole market is moving down, right? And we really haven't had a lot of buyers controlling the market in, in months now. And just because we had one good day yesterday, doesn't mean that everything is going to reverse, right? So what happened was I got in, I had a stop loss at the bottom of this demand zone. What happened was it pulled out. I was looking good was not ready to take profits. I will say supply wasn't my primary target. I was looking more in this 40 to 65 range, kind of in the low of all of these that were acting as a support, support. I was thinking I'll come up. It was probably going to act as a resistance. So this was my target right up here. Came up, hit red candles, took a, a flush to the downside, another one. And then this last candle stopped me out and I ended up taking a loss. Did I take a huge loss? No. Would I have taken a bigger loss a month ago? Absolutely. I would have taken a much bigger loss uh, 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 pretty much a month ago before I really started using discipline stops. And discipline stops just meaning a, a position inside this particular plan that I knew. I knew my stop was under this demand right when I started. So once I got stopped out here, I try and like refocus and figure out exactly what's going on. And it continued to flush down into this demand that had not been touched, all right? This demand here had not been touched, and I was like, okay, that's a stronger zone for me because it does not have any price action in it. What I was waiting for now, especially after taking this loss and knowing now that I need to wait for a retest, I saw it come, I was waiting, I saw this pullback, and I was like, okay, well, now that we're inside this zone here, is this gonna act as demand? Most likely not because of all the times price actions cut through it. And in a way, right here, it started to act as almost like a little bit of a supply. And that's what it did right here again. We have a really, really good rally, a little basing out period, and then a flush to the downside. If this would have came back down and touched this right here and retested this demand again, I probably would have gotten long, but I did not do that because it only recovered to here. Then we see after this bounce, it bounces up, 
cuts through this zone, which right now for me just invalidates that zone. It's been touched too many times. So literally what I would do, what I'm going to do right now because I am setting up my charts, is this is now no longer a valid zone for me, so I'm going to get rid of it. The next thing that I need to do is I need to start to look at more zones that happen intraday. So this is literally how I draw those zones. I don't have to necessarily worry about my key levels because those are built on a, a bigger time frame. Let's go out to a day. You can kind of get an idea here. This is kind of what my picture is looking like. And I pretty much have price action done above and below any extremes that can happen in the day. Because like I said, I'm updating these things pretty much every single day. So now that I'm between some of my key levels, we can see they're darker where they overlap. This is going to allow me to start to draw my levels in. And I start when I do my key levels. So if you're doing this for the first time out at the weekly, this is the daily chart. And we can see here's that, uh, that demand that formed. I can actually bring this down just a hair. Top of the body right before it broke out. So I'm looking for the body of the last bearish candle down to the low of the wick inside that basing zone. Four hour kind of looks like this, and we can now start to see a bunch of different days. That's where we have another supply zone, right? We had bearish activity, then it based out. The last green candle goes from the body of that up to the top wick. This was another basing period. That's one of the zones I just invalidated. We can break this down. I go all the way, but I pretty much am now looking for the one hour chart because I'm going to be looking just from what happened in today's action. In today's action, we stayed kind of flat. And what it looks like is we have a little bit of a supply that acted right here. This is a basing period, and then it flushed out. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw a new supply that I'm going to use going into tomorrow. And I'm going to call that a one-hour supply. So all I have to do, I just have to go to my little rectangle. I'm going to go to the body of the last green candle, the bottom of that body. So that's right here. And I'm going to bring that up to the wick inside that basing period. And I'm going to make this red. And that's going to be that. And you can label it one hour. I don't necessarily need to know that because I'm always flicking through the time frames and I always know what they're doing. We can see a little bit of a down. Now, this makes things a little confusing, right? And this is where this kind of becomes a little bit of an art form because we have a pretty down and then we have a little bit of a basing period and then it comes back up. But these two candles here... They make things a little confusing, but from what I've seen, they kind of just wash each other out. So I almost pretend like they're not there for now, unless when I get to a smaller time frame, I can see exactly what's going on. So I'm going to call this last, this last candle here down to the base. This is going to be a one hour demand zone for me going into tomorrow. That's really all I'm seeing here. So now I'll go down to the 45 minute chart. Just trying to stay once again, guys, I'm just trying to stay inside just today's session. So now I'm going to go down to 45. I don't really see much, but I could just bring this over here. Now I can bring this in to here. Good. Now we could kind of see that bounce off of here, go down to 30 minutes. Kind of looks like it starts to base out here, but it really, it kind of, I don't know. Let's, I think I'll investigate that further as we get down to the 15 minute chart. We definitely have an up rally. This is a little bit of a basing, but it hasn't broken out of this base yet. So there's no demands that I can really draw right there. If I come down to the five minute, we don't really have much going on here, but we can kind of see actually right where the price action is, there tends to be a lot of support and a lot of resistance that happens right at this mark. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw this in as like a key level for me to watch tomorrow. I'm going to make this white just because that's a personal preference of mine. And then boom, I'm done for now. I have my zones and this is what I'm going to use tomorrow for the ES. Okay. When I wake up, I'm going to see what price action does and I'm not going to touch anything until it either rallies into demand. We get a double test and a bounce out or it comes into supply. We get another test and it pulls back out. That's all I'm going to do for the ES. And like I said, I'm not going to look at this again till the morning. If I go to the NQ, because I haven't even done the NQ yet, we can kind of like do that a little bit quicker now. I'm just going to go out to the one hour chart, see if I see anything that's really of any interest to me. I can kind of see that we've cut through this demand a few times. What that's going to lead me to want to do is really get rid of this. It's kind of come through a few times. If I need to redraw it, I will. So what I see now is I see a nice bearish 
a basing period and then a pull out. So this is actually going to become a little bit more reliable from the top of this body down here. That's actually going to be a little bit more reliable as a demand on the one hour time frame. Here, I already have my supply that's drawn. I'm going to go down to 45 minutes. We can kind of see the same. We're in a basing period yet, but it hasn't broke anywhere yet. So I'm not really that worried about it. We could kind of see this actually almost acted as a basing period for this whole time. So just so I could be conservative, I'm going to come down and that last bearish candle, I'm just going to extend that supply zone. I'd rather my supply zone be a little bit big, which is going to lower that my risk than to make it really, really small and then be waiting for it to try and get there. It just makes my exits and my entries as a new trader a little bit clearer. And there's no nothing wrong with simplifying this as we get down into smaller time frames. See, like we said, now that's pretty good. I can even bring this down just a little bit more right to the bottom of that green candle right before it flushed down to the red. See a nice little base period, a little bounce off of here. We're good to go. 15 minute zone looking like the same. Once again, we have a lot of support looking like it's right at the price action now, but I'm going to check that out in the morning and that's really going to be my NQ for tomorrow. All right, so back to the ES, guys. This was one of those things where I should have looked at everything that was going on in the market. I should have seen the downtrend. Frankly, early in the morning, this was not, <clears throat> this was not a position where I should have been going live uh, long in the upward direction, long calls, and said that's using market context. Just because something comes out of demand does not mean it's a buy, and just because something comes out of supply doesn't mean we're buying puts. Okay, there has to be more context. Wow, as this thing is now taking a nice little dump to the downside, so hopefully we'll get to open, maybe a demand into rally, uh, de uh, a rally into demand, and then a bounce back. I hope that did help you guys. If it did, new channel, please give the video a thumbs up. If you're watching this live, please give the video a thumbs up as well. And I'll catch you on the next video.